Hello, today I would like to discuss about the dysphagia. This will be the part one. This means difficulty and the phagia means the swallowing. So dysphagia is difficulty with swallowing. It has two types of definition, objective definition and the subjective definition. Objective dysphagia means it is an abnormal delay in the transit of a liquid or solid bolus during the esophagia, oropharyngea or esophageal stages of swallowing. Subjective dysphagia means it is a sensation of delay in the transit of a liquid or solid bolus during the oropharyngeal or the esophageal stages of swallowing. Okay, uh, this is an approach to the dysphagia according to the 23rd edition of Division, Pride Principle and Practice of Medicine. Dysphagia can be divided into the esophageal dysphagia and the oropharyngeal dysphagia. In esophageal dysphagia, the patient complained of food sticking after swallowing and our regurgitation. Oropharyngeal dysphagia, the patient complained of difficulty in initiating swallowing and our choking or the aspiration. Esophageal dysphagia uh, can be assessed uh, by endoscopy and biopsy. It is divided into the three types, stricture, esophagitis or the dysmortality. Stricture may be benign cause or the malignant cause. Esophagitis may be due to the peptic in the GRD and the candidiasis and then the other infections and then the eosinophilic esophagitis. Dysmortality disorder can be assessed by manometry or the barium swallow. Causes may be the ecclesia or other non-specific mortality disorder. Oropharyngeal dysphagia is mainly due to the neurological disease like the barber palsy, pseudobarbar palsy, and the myasthenia gravis. I will describe detail about this topic in later videos, part 2 and the part 3. Esophageal dysphagia, it occurs in the involuntary phase, characterized by a sensation of a foot sticking. Detection of an esophageal disorder leading to dysphagia may not just stop at the esophagus because many of the systemic disorders may be present with esophageal symptoms. And in this topic, I will focus on the surgical causes, it means esophageal dysphagia. Initial evaluation should assess whether it's acute or chronic factions, it's solids and a liquid, intermittent or progressive, and then the site of impaction. While many patients point to a site of impaction, it is unreliable. If it is a sudden onset, it can be due to the foreign body aspiration or acute esophagitis. If it has a few months duration, it can be due to the C esophagus. Solid or liquid. Difficulty in swallowing first with solid and subsequently with liquid is a type of mechanical obstruction. And we should ask about the associated symptom. On dinophagia, it is a pain on the swallowing. It may occur in reflex esophagitis or the infective esophagitis, such as the candidiasis, happy simplex viral esophagitis, and then the cytomegalovirus esophagitis. And chest pain mainly occur in gastroesophageal reflex and mortality disorders. Regurgitation. Regurgitation is the return of esophageal contents from above, a functional due to a functional or the mechanical obstruction. Reflex is a passive return of the gastroduodenal contents to the mouth as part of the symptomology of the GRD. And we should ask about the loss of weight, which indicate malignancy or the other chronic diseases, or change in voice, which, is, which may be due to the reflex material irritating the focal cord, or in C. esophagus, invading uh, the recurrent laryngeal nerve can lead to the change in voice, hoarsening of the voice. And then we should ask about the cough and the dyspnea due to the trachea aspiration. Uh, and dyspnea and the cough can result uh, in C. esophagus due to the trachea esophageal fistula or the aspiration. Okay, which is the best initial investigation in dysphagia? Barium swallow or the endoscopy? 
they are complementary, not the duplicative. Endoscopy gives the accurate information on the esophageal anatomy. It is commonly used to evaluate the solid food dysphagia. It is more precise in mucosal inspection and it can take the biopsy. And moreover, endoscopy can are uh, used as a potential therapeutic tool to examine dilatation and the esophageal structure. Bearing and swallow can assess not only the anatomical abnormalities but also the motility. In motility disorder, bearing and swallow is superior to the endoscopy. It is more sensitive in detecting esophageal structure. Or uh, according to the American Journal of the Medicine, um, uh, initial barium swallow is better because you can plan the endoscopy, for example, to dilate the strictures. All patients with dysphagia should begin with the barium study except in suspected mechanical causes of dysphagia. And the next investigation is the esophageal manometry. It is now widely used to diagnose esophageal and motility disorder, provides comprehensive information about esophageal body function and associated behavior of the lower esophageal sphincter. And this is the uh, manometry picture of the esophagus. The next one is a high resolution impedance manometry. Uh, it is a clear recording on peristalsis and the spindle function. Impedance assets the transport function of the esophagus. It can also measure the pressure and the fluid movement in the esophagus and the lower esophagus spindle. Okay. In the manometry, a catheter measures the pressure along the esophagus and then it is connected to a monitor. The next one is a 24-hour pH study. It is now accepted as the most accurate method for the diagnosis of the gastroesophageal reflux. Um, okay, this is how 24-hour pH monitoring was done. And you have to set the percentage time of pH less than 4 in the uh, distal esophagus. Okay. Uh, in next video, I will continue the literature review of the sum of the causes of the dysphagia. Thanks for watching video and the subscribe my channel. And you can comment on the comment box.